This makes just a nice little fractured cloud. And that's all viola being processed in real time, right? None of it's sampled, nothing's pre-stored, it's all done on the fly. Uh, what I'm doing is using the software that I use to analyze what I'm playing and take that data and generate new music from it. Yeah. And some of it's unpredictable because I can't always tell what's going to happen. And sometimes I have some general idea. So I can have like different types of like this sound produces just really low cloud. <laughs> other stuff with it that I can't always predict. Which is real effective for some really dark, stormy things. Yeah, none of these clip. That's good. Here's that. That's the one. Yeah, that is a good sound. That turned out really, really well. The best part for me about being a musician, every day is different. Right? It never gets old. Whether it's composing or performing, the situations are always fresh and always new. Um, so I, I enjoy that, that I can't really be complacent. Um, and there's always challenges. In the late 90s, I, I knew him uh, not very well, but starting in around 2001, 2002, he and I have uh, been inseparable <laughs> musically. Uh, he and I have collaborated on pieces over the years, text sound works, sound poetry, besides uh, electroacoustic works where he's processing either my flugelhorn or uh, trumpet or any other instrument. I guess just creating, because what's nice about composing, my favorite part of composing is creating something that wasn't there before. I mean, that's exciting just in, of its own sake. I like composing music that I don't yet know how to compose, so I never repeat myself. It's too easy to write a piece of music that's just like a piece of music I wrote last year, but then I don't learn anything from it. So I like setting up a compositional problem, may not be the right word, but some, something I have to solve, and I may not know how to do it yet. And so in the process, I learn a lot. So that's part of it that I really enjoy about composing. And then at the end, so that's the process when I'm sitting here in this room all by myself, you know, just in the thoughts and sounds in my head, that's that part of it. The other part is that I like the most is when it's all finished and hearing it played by other people. That's, you know, it's, it's very gratifying to hear my music played. Soundproof was an outgrowth of uh, Brian and myself working with Pat and Alan Strange. So Alan and I worked for decades together and when Brian came into the picture he and Alan worked quite a bit together towards the end of Alan's life he died in the beginning of the 2000s Brian and I decided to keep the the music going so we decided to form a group with Pat Strange Alan's wife and so the three of us decided well we want to do a couple things one we want to keep Alan's music alive which we've done over the years and the other thing is we wanted to form a very contemporary electroacoustic music group and take it on the road, which is what we've also done. So it was born out of the desire to make music. It was born out of the desire to keep the music going, to develop new music, and to work with acoustic instruments and this um, device called, a, an instrument called a kima. Kima is a, is a digital processing system, a sound processing system. It's an algorithmic system that um, can be programmed ahead of time to do certain things at certain times. Working with the ensemble, being a composer and a performer with the ensemble is really exciting because I actually sit on both sides. I'm the composer when I write for the ensemble and then I'm also one of the performers. And there are times it just kind of merges, the two become just one giant thing and it's actually a lot of fun. What is it like playing with Brian? 
Well, not only um, playing with Brian on stage, but playing with him anywhere. Um, he's, uh, he's very meticulous. He's a meticulous musician, meaning that um, he's thinking about everything. Um, as you know, Brian, besides being a violist and a bass player and an uh, electric bass player, um, he is an electronic musician playing on a system called a kima. And he's a master uh, kima artist, recognized as such. And as such, he's, a, he's always a teacher, besides being a friend and a, and a musician uh, colleague. So playing with him um, is uh, kind of, you get the best of, of all worlds of playing with a musician which you know can't be said of all musicians of course we're a strange bunch but he's um, he's a very good friend he's very articulate he's very intelligent he's on top of his game and musically um, it's a very searching very searching musical experience and a very collaborative one and again since there are such good players I can write almost anything and they can play it so I'm not limited by their technique let's say and they're also, uh, they've played so much contemporary music, they're very good feedback to me as a composer. So you have this interesting round and around information loop going on. So it's actually really one of the best experiences. I've written several pieces for them and, and I'm scheming, always doing more, because I know they will play it really, really well. That's fun. He's written a trumpet and flugelhorn piece for me, which I've performed all over the world for him. There's always limitations with, with any performer, and in a way, that's good, because we can fool ourselves thinking anything's possible, especially with, with electronics, and I run into this with my students from time to time, of thinking that they have an electronic version, let's say, of a clarinet, and you can program it to do anything. But real clarinet people can't necessarily do that. I mean, they have to actually breathe, among other things. You know? So uh, every, every human performer has limitations. And so every instrument has limitations. And then within that, a specific performer might have his or her own limitations. And all of that just becomes more information to work with as a composer. So those limitations aren't negative. I actually see them as positives because they actually help shape the way a composition is gonna go. It's very gratifying to hear my own music played. I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing in our field because composing is done isolated. All right, usually sitting here at this desk and, and working with my imagination. And so it's very singular. And then contrast that with having music played in a public venue, in a concert, on stage, uh, where lots of people, strangers to me, are, are hearing my music for the first time. And so it's a very interesting and actually nerve-wracking experience at one level, like will somebody like it, will they not? Because you have no control over that. But to hear people applaud at the end and say they like the music, that's you know, very gratifying. I mean, what could be better than that? I mean, it's really, really satisfying at a very deep level. We like to have a good time. Funny, he's very funny. He's always liking to crack jokes. The most prominent characteristic that I see and admire in Brian is his tenacity. He doesn't give up. He really works hard and he's very good at what he does. He's thorough. I really like his approach to music. It's creative, but also very technical. It's an interesting blend of creativity and also being very smart. He's brave. He, he tries things, whether if it's a success or not. You know, he's not afraid to stand up for what he believes in. And yeah, he's inspirational that way. You know, just keep going. <laughs> I would say he's got more than one, and they kind of all combine together. One is his extreme positive attitude. He's kind of a can-do kind of person, you know. If there's something that needs to be done, uh, he just jumps in with both feet. So he's totally, totally dependable, and he's very, very on all the time, very intense. He's a very intense fellow, even though he can fool you. He kind of comes across a little bit, a little bit laid back sometimes, and um, that kind of belies this intensity for uh, creating something of great value. Plus I really like him because he likes good wine and that's a weakness of mine. He listens to everyone around him and so there's a, a feeling of collaboration and that's that's largely what I like about Brian. Yeah, it's the collaboration. He realizes that there's a group dynamic and he and he capitalizes on that group dynamic by listening to everybody in the group and combining the ideas into something that's, that's coming from all of us.
I teach at the college level, which is different than teaching in earlier levels. What we have at San Jose State, rather than a department of music, it's a school of music and dance, which means it's a professional school. That sets up the way I teach. Students are there because they want to be professional musicians. So I have to assume that every student there really, really wants to do this. And they also know that it's not the highest paying job in our society. And they probably have some pushback by their parents who don't want them to do this because their parents want them to make more money and all of this and working through that. But it does affect my teaching and as to the point that, as, in fact, we talk about these issues in some of my classes, the reality, the business of music, how do you make a living? Is the fifths we have to watch, right? To make sure that the fifths are definitely perfect fifths and not diminished fifths because they can sneak in because they, at a glance, we just say, oh, there's a fifth, it's gotta be good. Therefore, it's a fifth, but it's, if it's a diminished fifth tritone, and there was like one, I think, in the lawsuits that we were analyzing. You know, I like how he is just so fascinated with this stuff. I mean, you can tell he has a passion for it, and the class wouldn't be the same without that. Working with people, uh, working with students, and, and seeing the light go on on a certain topic is really exciting. You know, on a, whether it's counterpoint or form and analysis or electronic music, and a student gets it, right? That's exciting, very exciting. What got me interested in music as a young child is it touches me deep inside, and there's no words for that. And good music still does that. Nothing better than being in a situation, a concert, and hearing some music, and you're just saying, this is special. I can't say why, but I know this is a wonderful thing then that's, that's life worth living. And that's what I like the most about music.